Currently Kirkland, your source for city news and events in the community. With Pam Jardine at the news desk. Stay up to date with weekly news reports and what's happening in Kirkland. Now, here's Pam. Welcome to Currently Kirkland, where every week you can engage with your community by discovering the latest developments in, around, and about your city. I'm Pam Jardine. Kirkland's single-family housing sector is showing signs of its first sustained rebound after four years of depressed activity. Data from the City of Kirkland indicates the rebound began in January of this year, when the City's Building Department received 16 applications to build single-family homes. Just one month earlier, Kirkland had received just one application. The growth trend has been consistent through May, which has been the city's most active month in construction applications since January of 2008. Kirkland received 26 applications in May. In only four months since 2006 have builders submitted more applications. Many of the applications are for homes within housing developments throughout the city. John Kapler, an architect for Architectural Innovations, attributes the trend to a variety of factors. Uh, less foreclosures available in the marketplace, no new product at all available in the marketplace. We've got credit loosening up so people can actually go out and buy loans or buy homes. Since people are actually buying finished product, speculative builders are now able to get loans on new construction projects that they want to do. We've got less product available, we've got more consumers feeling like now is the time to buy because there's not very much product available and they don't think the prices are going to go down anymore. So everybody is excited about buying new homes. Kirkland's uptick in house construction applications mirrors a regional uptick in home prices and home sales. The Seattle Times reported on June 4th that home prices and home sales had increased for two consecutive months. Home sales were particularly optimistic. Purchases in May exceeded 2,000 for the first time since August 2007. Despite all the activity, real estate is still worth substantially less than it was in 2008. Back then, King County valued the combined real estate of Kirkland and Fire District 41 at more than $17.5 billion. In 2012, King County valued the same area at $14.7 billion. Kirkland is still the third most valuable city in King County, behind Seattle and Bellevue. Last week, the Kirkland City Council extended the city's existing noise ordinance to watercrafts. Under the amendment, the city will now regulate noise from public waterways the same way it currently regulates noise from automobiles, with one primary difference. For watercraft, the ordinance allows noise that is audible up to 300 feet from the watercraft. For automobiles, the ordinance allows noise that is audible up to 50 feet from the automobile. It all comes down to, um, sir, it just comes down to what's, what's reasonable. People yelling in the street or from a boat in the middle of the afternoon um, usually doesn't generate complaints. Mm -hmm. um, and if it did, the officer would have to apply a reasonableness, a reasonableness test. Would a prudent person, given the same facts and circumstances, draw the same conclusion that the behavior is annoying and, un and therefore unreasonable? However, if the, bay, if the bay was empty and somebody was making it, uh, um, such noise at 2 o'clock in the morning, that would be deemed to be unreasonable. And um, the courts have been pretty clear and consistent with that um, as it relates to our municipal court. The burden of, to prove unreasonableness um, is a high burden for us, and right. it includes a witness statement. Most local governments throughout Puget Sound protect their communities from excessive noise pollution, and they use a variety of tools to do that. Bonnie Lake, for example, uses a noise ordinance similar to Kirkland's new watercraft amendment. Seattle uses a noise ordinance and an anchoring ordinance, and Pierce County uses four different policies to protect its community from loud, repetitive sounds. A noise ordinance, anchoring ordinance, rafting ordinance, and a speed ordinance. Until June 16, when the amendment becomes effective, however, the only method through which Kirkland could regulate watercraft noise was a speed regulation. The amendment's intent is to provide law enforcement officers with a tool that will allow them to respond to community noise concerns, be it on the water or land. King County Marine Patrol will be the primary agency enforcing the ordinance. The watercraft amendment resulted from the city's outreach effort aimed at responding to the community's concerns about boat noise while continuing to encourage water-based recreation. The new regulations were drafted based upon public feedback, primarily received at a community meeting in early May. 
The City Council directed Kirkland's Police Department to monitor the amendment's effects throughout the summer and report back in the fall. Puget Sound Energy is again reaching out to Kirkland and Redmond residents for feedback on a four-mile electric transmission line it hopes to begin constructing by the end of next year. The aerial transmission line would connect the Sammamish substation on Willows Road with the Juanita substation on Northeast 132nd Street near Juanita High School. Puget Sound Energy is hosting two community meetings on June 20th and June 23rd to discuss three route options for the new transmission line. The June 20th meeting will begin at 6 p.m. at the Old Redmond Schoolhouse. The June 23rd meeting will begin at 10 a.m. in Evergreen Hospital's Surgery and Physician Center's room, TAN 100-101. Each meeting will include a presentation and a question and answer session. Alternative number one would transport electricity west along Northeast 90th Street, north along 132nd Avenue Northeast, and then west again on Northeast 95th Street to 124th Avenue Northeast. The transmission line would then follow 124th Avenue Northeast north to Northeast 116th Street, and then west along 116th Avenue Northeast. Then, the 115 kilovolt transmission line would head north on 120th Avenue Northeast to Northeast 124th Street, where it will then run west to connect with an existing transmission line. Alternative number two would follow 132nd Avenue Northeast north to Northeast 120th Street across Slater and 124th Avenues to the Cross Kirkland Corridor. It would follow the East Side Rail Corridor to 120th Avenue Northeast then up 116th Avenue Northeast to the Juanita substation on Northeast 132nd Street. Alternative number three would transport electricity north along Willows Road and behind commercial buildings, work its way to the Cross Kirkland Corridor, dogleg at 116th Avenue Northeast near I-405, and follow 120th Avenue Northeast and 116th Avenue Northeast to the Juanita substation. The process so far has been exhaustive. It began with a list of more than 30 route options, which has shrunk to three. A citizen advisory group recommended all of the remaining options, and the Puget Sound Energy team scrutinized each of the three routes by foot, by stakeholder feedback, and by computer model to weigh the transmission line's potential impacts on schools, wetlands, neighborhoods, business, and utilities. Puget Sound Energy is building the transmission line to boost the capacity and reliability of the Moreland system, which provides power to 150,000 customers. For more information, visit pse.com slash sam1115. May was Bike to Work Month. For those who joined in, you no doubt discovered how rewarding your work commute can be. You might have also noticed how different the roads appear from a bike seat. Cyclists are neither pedestrians nor automobiles, and yet they operate in environments dominated by both. This requires the cyclist to devote more attention to safety, etiquette, and efficiency. For a tip on how to navigate efficiently in this netherworld, we'll turn to Daniel Weiss, president of the Cascade Bicycle Club. Cities generally have more bike trails and more marked roads and more bike lanes than most people are aware of. So if you use the maps that are published by either the cities or the county, King County has a wonderful bike map route, this is if you study online or the physical maps of where all the routes that would be good to ride on is a good thing to study and know about, there may be a better route than you're aware of that you would find out if you saw the map. Last weekend, Kirkland's young artists and musicians entertained crowds at Peter Kirk Park during the 11th annual Blue Fish Festival. Outside, visitors heard a variety of folk and rock music from six local bands. And inside the Kirkland Teen Union building, visitors viewed more than 50 drawings from students throughout the city. Here's more sights and sounds from the festival. And now it's Basically, we have student representatives on KYC that are from different schools and they'll go to their art teachers, principals, administrators, they'll make announcements for all the art students and they'll say, hey, 
we're collecting and a lot of students will submit their art and they will display it and I think that that's a great idea because there are so many great paintings in there and, and sometimes you know that, that there, there's that one student at your school and you're like I know they were this talented and you see all their art and it's just a great chance for people to express themselves. Uh, this event we actually had to set up the whole outdoor stage and just making sure everything's right, setting up tents, making sure that everything stays the way it is and all the bands are a-okay -okay to go ahead. We originally created this group as almost like a big party band. It was just for the talent show at our school and it just kind of morphed and eventually we decided to keep doing it and um, we've had up to like 14, 15 people on stage at once. Summer sun fell, is out in the woods. We settled into our house in the woods. I think it's a good experience. You get to you get to play outside and you get to know how to like work in that you know group effort to make the music happen. It's, and it's harder to play outside than it is to play in any other event, so I think it's a good experience. It's cool. I like all the music. We just try to do anything we can to support the teenagers in the community. I just thought it would be kind of cool to have something a little different. So it's really a good community collaboration that really represents teens across the board. Remember, you can access any episode of Currently Kirkland on demand on the city's website, on your mobile devices, and on YouTube. We'd also love to hear from you. If you have any news tips, suggestions, or comments, please send them to kirklandtv at kirklandwa.gov. Thanks for watching Currently Kirkland. We'll see you next week.